Hello everybody, Chaplain Bob here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Well, this uh, Bible study is going to be on healing. You know, it's a... Uh, there are some verses about healing and uh, well I guess it's my job to uh, try to bring different topics to you now you know that's the thing I've been doing Bible studies on YouTube for oh I don't know 10 years and uh, you know hit the playlist I've got some good information on some of the playlists um, I would like to think that the study on Elijah is one of the better ones. I mean, he led a very interesting life. Uh, I find him to be my favorite prophet of the Old Testament anyways. Not to take anything away from Jesus, who had many different offices, including prophet. But... Um, Elijah will return one day to confront the false prophet, the beast, and the devil. So, and he's going to have a companion. He's going to be one of the two witnesses. So, but um, it's going to be very, very interesting. So, you know, take a look. Take a look at the playlist, you know. I've been um, busy doing some other ministry things. And uh, so let's get started. Why, how to have, well, the last study I did was why no healing. But this study is going to be on how to get healing. So let's take a look. All right, in Matthew chapter 4, and verse 23 and 24, we read the following. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. I think the number one thing that Jesus healed when he was on this earth was casting out devils. I believe that was the top thing. So, I mean, you could read about all the times Jesus healed people. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Uh, Matthew 9, 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Now, in, let's see, Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples. Now, this includes Judas Iscariot people. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power. He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now the name of the twelve apostles are these, the first Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew his brother, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the publican, James the son of Alphaeus, and Labaeus, whose surname was Thaddeus. 
Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. Hmm. Did you know that Judas had power to heal the sick? Can you believe that? And yet he betrayed Christ. Hmm. Verse 5. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Take a look at Je Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 8. Um, God divorced Israel. But here he's saying, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now I've done a, a fairly detailed study on that. Uh, you only have I call, uh, you only have I known. I think it's a three-part series where God cast Israel away and promised that He would bring them back into the fold with a new covenant. Well, guess what? That's what this is. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely ye have received. Freely give. How many pastors do you know that uh, believe in that? Oh yeah, I'll buy my latest book. Uh, it's only nineteen ninety five, and if you and if you call now, I'll throw in this prayer shawl from a rabbi in Israel that blessed it. Oh yeah. You notice I don't beg for money too often. Verse nine: Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses, nor script for your journey. Script is just another name for money. Neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat. Oh, yeah. All right, let's take a look at some other things. Now, in Matthew 13, we could read the whole thing, but I'm not going to. We're going to start in verse 10. Now, Jesus had just gotten through speaking to them parables, some stories, right? And your demon nominational preacher will tell you, well, you know, the reason Jesus taught in parables is that he wanted to explain to them an earthly story that was easy for them to understand that had a heavenly meaning, which, well, let's see what Jesus said. So Jesus talked to them in parables. Now, in Matthew 13 and verse 10, we read, And the disciples came and said unto him, To who? To Jesus. And they said, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He, Jesus, answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. You see, your preacher's they oftentimes tell you the opposite of what the Bible really says. You know, he, he Jesus didn't tell them, talk to them in parables so that they'd understand. He talked in parables so that they wouldn't understand. Verse 12. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away even that that he hath. Therefore speak I to, to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not, and shall not understand. 
and seeing ye shall see, and shall not, not perceive. For the people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed. Yes, people, sometimes people close their own eyes. They're spiritually blind, willfully. And their eyes have they closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Oh yeah. All right, let's jump to Luke chapter 4. And he, Jesus, and he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. But you know what? Many people don't believe that. Even people that claim to believe in Jesus, they don't believe that. All right, so let's skip on. I think you get the idea. All right, let's go to Luke chapter 7, verse 1. Now when he, Jesus, had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. And a certain centurion's servant, who was dear unto him, was sick and ready to die. Now, a centurion, as I understand it, is like a, an officer. You know, he's not just some run-of-the-mill, private, lowly soldier. No, he's, he's like an officer. He's a, he's a leader, a commander. All right, so a certain centurion servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying, that he was worthy for whom he should do this. For he loveth our nation, and hath built us a synagogue. So, not only is this Roman centurion uh, a protector of the, of the real Jews, but he, he built him a synagogue to worship in. And I bet you, well, I'm not a betting man, but uh, I, I'm willing to believe that he was probably an Israelite. Verse 6. Then Je Jesus went with them, and when he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. Now, what kind of faith is that? Just say the word, and my servant shall be healed. Wow. For I also am a man set under authority. You see, everybody has a boss except for God the Father. He's the only one that doesn't have a boss. For I also am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers, 
And I say unto one, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh, and to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. You see, he was acknowledging that he was basically under the authority of Jesus. And I kind of suspect that he understood that Jesus was subject to the Father, which he, Jesus himself, admitted. Verse 9, When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned him about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And they that were sent, returning to the house, found the servant whole that had been sick. So you've got to have faith. And you've got to be under the authority of Jesus Christ. Uh, obedience, people, very important. You know, you can't be disobedient, doing all the things that God hates, and then come to him and say, oh, Lord, heal me. You know, uh, if you're a believer and you're running around playing around with a bunch of prostitutes and you catch a sexually transmitted venereal disease uh, and you know better, well, don't be surprised when, you know, you don't get healed. So let's keep going. Now you can read the, the Luke 8, chapter 8, verses 43. Uh, where the woman that had the issue of blood 12 years, and she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. And she was. What kind of faith is that? You know? Now, here's a companion verse, what we read, I think it was in Luke, uh, John chapter 12, verse 38 that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report, and to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because that Isaiah said again, He hath blinded their eyes. Who? God. He hath blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of him. All right, now, here's the, where I was going with this. This is the, uh, I guess you could say the punchline. James chapter 5. Let's start in verse 13. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. And we're not talking about a woman's name. We're talking about is any happy? Merry. Verse 14. Is any sick among you? Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Hmm. Good luck finding two or three elders of a church that are actually real instead of 501c3 prostitutes. Yeah, you can tell I don't have much respect for pastors and elders, deacons. But uh, if you can find at least two, let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. What's the name of the Lord? Jesus, who is the Christ. I don't think I would let anybody pray over me with Yeshua HaMashiach. I don't, and yeah, that's not what my Bible says. Verse 15, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, 
And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults to a Catholic priest named calls himself Father? No. No. Verse 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Boy, that's a truth. And that does not exclude women, people. It's just that, just remember, woman was taken out of man. You know, when they're talking about man, they're not excluding women. Uh, there's lesbian feminists standing behind the pulpit calling themselves pastorates, or I call them uh, priestitutes, and they'll, yeah, I don't know, they'll pervert this. Verse 17, Elias, that's Elijah, was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, that word err is where we get the word error, E-R-R. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. I think everybody should read the book of James. Um, it's just, I call it the book of daily living. I mean, there is so much practical information in the book of James. Let's take a look at, well, in, in um, chapter 1 of James, um, he says, if anybody lacks wisdom, let him ask of God in prayer. You know, I was when I was a baby Christian, I mean, brand new to the faith. I mean, weeks, if that. I asked the Lord for understanding. I didn't know to ask this. It just came out, you know. And I also asked the Lord, please never let me be deceived. And uh, and I think he's honored that prayer. Um, I mean, about Bible stuff. I've been deceived about people, but I, I would like to think I'm not deceived about Bible stuff. I'm probably not right about everything. I'm sure I'm not. I mean, let's face it, Jesus didn't even know what day he was going to come back. He said the angels in heaven didn't know, and he didn't know, and the angels in heaven didn't know. So only the Father. So if there's something Jesus doesn't know, you better believe there's a lot of things I don't know. But James chapter 2 is uh, where James tells you that uh, works follow faith. Yeah, if you have faith, you will have fruit that'll be the product of that faith. But here we're going to read James chapter 4, verse 1. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Came they not hence, even of your lusts, that war in your members? Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss. What does that mean, to ask amiss? It means you ask wrongly. You're asking the Lord the wrong thing. Uh, you know... You, if you ask for something, you should ask something that you know the Lord wants you to have. You know, if you read the Bible every day and you ask the Lord to reveal things to you, I'm positive that he'll grant that wish. But if you ask him for a different uh, 
Well, if you're a guy and you're asking for a different Hollywood whore to sleep with every night, I don't think he's going to ask. And, you know, I don't think he's going to give you that prayer. I don't think so. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Enmity means hatred. That the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. That's why I love the King James Bible. You may not understand what a word means, but usually right around the same sentence or in the same paragraph, it'll explain to you what that word means. Verse 5. Do you think that the Scripture saith in vain? The Spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy, but he giveth, but he giveth more grace. Therefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Boy, is that some good information, good advice? Oh, yeah. All right, verse 11. Speak not evil of one another. You know, God doesn't like gospers. Doesn't like it. Speak not evil of one another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that judgeth another? Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city, and continue there a year, and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, If the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that, but now ye rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. All right, let's take a look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 17. Honor all men. Honor all men. Wow, that's kind of hard to do. Especially with all these corrupt politicians we have, huh? Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the froward. Uh, that's the evil ones, right? 19. For this is thankworthy. If a man for conscience toward God endure grief suffering wrongfully, for what glory is it if, when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? But if, when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, that is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that ye should follow his steps." who did no sin. That's right, Christ, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. 
When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live in righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Now, remember something. Jesus said, well, somebody asked Jesus, uh, you know, those of you that listen to me a long time, you've heard this probably a dozen times or more, but someone asked Jesus what was the most important commandment. Matthew twenty-two thirty-six. 36. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And hopefully if you've got Satanists as neighbors, you uh, move. But, uh, you know, that's just, that's the Bob translation. So, you know, when you love the Lord and you're obedient, you know, and you ask for healing and you're in his will, good chance he'll honor that. Just like in the previous study we did, um, I did, the, um, you know, Job was afflicted, but it was for testing. So, some things to think about. And just remember, Jesus said, if ye love me, keep my commandments. Love the Lord, love thy neighbor, right? And another thing, too, in Luke 13, verse 3 and verse 5, Jesus speaking said, I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. I tell you yea, nay, but, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. He said that in verse 3 and verse 5. You know, and when Jesus tells you something twice, it's important. He's not just repeating himself, right? So repentance is a very, very important thing that we turn from our wickedness into his marvelous light. All right, one more thing. Ephesians 4 and verse 32. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. You know, forgiveness is, boy, it's not an easy thing. I am a testament to that. And I'll admit it, I'm a, I'm a hypocrite. But, um, I don't know. I hope you learned something. Uh, sometimes I need to take my own advice and my own teachings, but uh, what can I tell you? I can only take a horse and lead it to water. And uh, what do they say? Some people drink at the fountain of knowledge. Others just gargle. That's something I heard. All right. Um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.